every viewpoint or ideology or political leaning has advantages and disadvantages. I like to live out a viewpoint or ideology or political leaning so I can understand it. I will view things through those lenses so I can fully understand what they mean. It's similar to how some actors have to live their parts in order to understand their parts. Eventually, I return to my true mindset with the knowledge of how the other mindsets truly work. Sometimes I find some of them utterly vile, as those with those mindsets would find my mindset utterly vile. It's just how it works. From my perspective, when I come back from one of those trips to a mindset, which can last months at a time, some of them leave me completely empty, cold, conniving, mean, and filled with a mindset of wanting revenge on the whole world. Some give me that same feeling, but not revenge on the whole world, but on those who are not a part of my tribe. Some make me feel subservient to life. Some make me feel like I'm better than everyone else, no matter how much it's a form of the Dunning-Kruger effect. If each of these mindsets politically catch on to the point where society is loosely based on those things, and it's a successful society, we will always be able to find a segment of society that suffers as a result of it. The fewer that suffer, the harsher that suffering is. The more that suffer, the less harsh that suffering is. And the same goes for the benefits of a system. The more that benefit, the less beneficial those benefits are. The fewer that benefit, the more beneficial those benefits are. And then there's the math behind how the benefits relate to the suffering. Suffering fuckatash. The people who we think should suffer the most and the people who we think should benefit the most has several philosophies, and that's a large part of what defines where people fall onto political spectrums. But probably the most important root of why people fall into certain political spectrums is all about the biology of the brain, but I digress a little bit. If we think the uber-rich should suffer the most, and we put that into action, we would see a decrease in business activity and eventually everyone would suffer. If we think everyone should suffer equally in tax percentages and we put that into action, or if we think that under the law all demographics are the same, then the poor and disadvantaged suffer the most. If we think the uber-rich should suffer the least and we put that into action, programs that in the end help the entire country are unable to get paid for. And each side of the political spectrum has a hint of the opposite side within it. It's very much a yin and yang thing. My viewpoint is that the people we should try to reduce suffering the most in are the poor and disadvantaged. And whatever routes we have to figure out with at least a decent amount of accuracy, which people are poor and disadvantaged so we can effectively and efficiently reduce suffering should be taken. In my view, if the poor and disadvantaged are at least surviving, then we will have less crime and we will have more people being able to have actions that can be productive in our society, even if just on a social level. Because we need all the positive things we can get. Life is hard enough as it is. In governments and in society, there is no such thing as equality. There are only the spectrums that exist within the yin and yang. If you separate yourself from the yin to promote the yang, the yin will grow in the center of you. The more you try to squish the yin, the larger it will grow inside of you. This is a hard lesson for us to learn, but it's always consistent. Always. The things that people are really good at, the kinds of thinking on the other side of the spectrum, they usually suck at. And each of us, with the types of combinations of all the types of axis of the things we excel in and the things we suck at, will have certain places on the political spectrum that we naturally fit into. A lot of it is biological, and a lot of it has to do with the way our brains develop when we continually receive certain types of stimuli as we are growing up. A stereotype that very, very, very often holds true is that really creative, spontaneous, weird, freaky people who enjoy trying to find new approaches, new perspectives, and new territory tend to naturally tilt towards the left. 
and really methodical, structured, and coldly logical people who enjoy doing things that have already been done to naturally tilt to the right. I find it very strange that those who tend to be very creative, spontaneous, weird, or freaky, including myself, tend to find collectivism more important than individualism, and that people who are really methodical, structured, and coldly logical tend to find individualism more important than collectivism, unless, of course, they're the types of people who want everyone to follow a religious belief. But it's strange, and to me it represents part of that yin and yang thing. No matter what side you think you're on, part of the other side resides within you. You cannot get out of this. There are no cheat codes. You can delude people into thinking otherwise, and you can try to convince people that there is no yin or yang, but there is no way out of this. It helps to know yourself as truly as possible in what you project out and what you find within yourself. And once you see this, it can help you make peace with the reality of where you actually fit. Recently, I actually figured out where I fit, and it took truly understanding the other perspectives by literally living those perspectives for months at a time for me to get it. And from my perspective, when the poor suffer, when the systemically disadvantaged suffer, we all suffer. I take a very Ubuntu approach. I am because we are. I have a very strong sense of morality. I let it lapse quite a bit last year in order to view things through other lenses. Now that I really understand those perspectives by living them, I refuse to do that again. I'm open-minded, but I know where I actually stand. I know who would suffer in implementing my mindset into the way our government is structured, and I know who would suffer in implementing most of the other perspectives of the political spectrum. I stand up for my beliefs. And yes, they indeed are just beliefs. They're my beliefs, and you have your beliefs, and we're all going to defend our beliefs. But if the only thing you end up doing is making fun of other people's beliefs instead of actually describing what yours are, your attitude screams of the Dunning-Kruger effect. Do I fall into that sometimes? Absolutely. I think we all fall into that sometimes. It's not really a good thing, but it happens. I just personally don't think we should get paid to express the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's the same reason why I hate the attitude and message in most rap. And that's a wrap.